Uh, good morning once again. I think it's quite hard for me to restrict only to 40 minutes, but I want each one of you to be the timekeepers. Please alert me. I will just take you through the basics of interface of the uh, Sedonta pathology is probably a subject that most of the general pathologists do not like. This is because we say the dermatopathologist speaks a different language, which we don't see in our pathology. And unless we have an interest, a passion to learn dermatopathology, definitely we do not look at a skin slide. Even if we look at a skin slide, unless we know what to look for, everything looks like a dermatitis. Ultimately, the diagnosis just goes as dermatitis. But I tell you, you're all young dermatologists who are here. You need to become dermatopathologists also. There are only two fields where the clinician could learn pathology and become a specialist. So one is this area where you're a dermatologist and dermatopathologist. You need to read the slides, the biopsies you send of your patients. Second is hematology. You're the clinical hematologist. They want to read the hematology slides also. So you need to develop to that level. So I've just taken these objectives for my session. One is end of this 30 minute session. So we should be able to define and categorize interface dermatitis. Second is know the salient microscopic features of interface dermatitis. Third is once you know, so you have the, it's like what the mind does not know, eyes do not look for. So once you know what to look for, then you should be able to identify the microscopic features of few diseases under interface dermatitis. Lastly, I will just repeat again. So this session, at least I should be inspiring all of you to learn the pathology. So if you go with that inspiration, I think the fine job is done and I go happily. What is this interface dermatitis? All of us know about dermatitis. So let us just define this term interface. Interface dermatitis. So conditions in which the primary pathology involves an interface. Interface is dermo, dermo epidermal junction. So what are the components of interface then? So it is a basal layer of the epidermis. Can you appreciate the basal layer of the epidermis here? Very So the basal layer, can you appreciate? They are all standing out like pillars, elongated cells. Then what do we see at the apex of the basal cells? What do they contain? There's a different color. They contain melanin at the apex. Then the dermoepidermal junction. Dermoepidermal junction. The papillary dermis, that is a superficial aspect. This is a deeper, dense reticular dermis. This is a superficial papillary dermis. Then the adventitial dermis, that is around the adenexal structures. And then this particular slide is highlighting a layer. Can you appreciate that? What is it? Please interact. What is it? Basement membrane. So don't, is it looking different? The color is different? To highlight the basement membrane, it's not just a H and E stain. So this is fast positive say PAS, paralytic acid shed stain. That is used, which is highlighting the basal, the basement membrane. So the constituents of interface function as a single anatomical pathological unit and the pathological alterations of any of these results in changes that affect all the individual components which we spoke of now, the interface. That's why some diseases with these pathological changes are put under interface dermatitis. So the morphological changes are primarily due to 
keratinocyte damage. So when we talk about keratinocyte here, we talk about the basal cells, damage to the basal cells, then remodeling of the basement membrane and effects of inflammatory cells. Three things constitute or give rise to the morphological changes that we observe under the microscope. So one more advantage for you to become a pathologist, I tell you, is the gross pathology. Whenever a biopsy is done, a specimen is dissected and sent to us, we as pathologists, we look at how the specimen looks macroscopically to the naked eye first. Then we look at the fat section, then we go for micro. But here, who is at an advantageous position? It is you people who do the grossing for us. In the sense, we do not know how the lesions appear. The patient is with you. So we know we have no scope, not much scope for cross examination in dermatopathology. So you look at the lesion, you describe the lesions, then you send the biopsy to us. And most often I tell you, unless you give us proper clinical history, uh, the clinical features and the differential diagnosis, we will not be able to give a definitive diagnosis because most of the lesions in dermatopathology are by exclusion to diagnosis by exclusion. So secondary changes follow the primary changes. And what secondary changes are we see is changes that affect the epidermis, then the papillary dermis or both epidermis, papillary dermis, then that results in various histological changes that characterize the morphological findings of individual interface dermatitis. So these are secondary changes, what we see in the epidermis and the dermis. So primary changes, you all remember the first slide where the basement membrane was seen with a special stain. Now just look at the basement membrane, can you identify the basement membrane here? No, it is not that deep that. So what else is there in its place? There are some spaces, the vacuoles. So the first thing is basal cell vacuolase, vacuolization, that is the vacular alteration. Is it appreciable? So one of the most prominent feature? Yes. So this includes vacuolation, presence of vacuoles in the cells which could be basal, sub-basal. So which could, if you see the cells here, so the vacuole is here, nucleus is up. This is sub-basal, basal vacuolations. So expansion, this is vacuolar degeneration. That leads to destruction of the basal cell with the appearance of. So we call this cell as a balloon the cell. Sometimes the entire destruction could be there. So it is ballooned, it is swollen with the vacuole. So that vacuolar degeneration. Then when this happens, imagine when the basal cell is basal layer is destroyed. What happens now? These squamous cells, what is the next layer? What is superficial to the basal layer? Spinous. So now spinous layer directly abuts or sits on the dermis. So what do you call that as? It is spermatization. So there is extensive vacuolar change in the basal layer. What has happened here? We saw two slides initially. You could appreciate the basal vacuolation. What has happened here to the vacuolization? Is it minimal? Market. Extensive. It is extensive with loss of cells leading to the formation of, it's almost separation of dermo-epidermal junction. What do you call this as? Louder. You all had breakfast, right? Please don't sleep off. Yes. All of you know it. Please come out with it. Right or wrong, please contribute. So Max Joseph's space. Confluent basal cell damage that results in the formation of clefts. Let us talk about primary interface dermatitis. Another feature we see very importantly is upper tortic bodies. What do we call them as? Individual cell necrosis, necrotic keratinocytes. Very good. Sedentary bodies. Any other name? Colloid bodies. Sedentary bodies. Yes. 
So apoptosis individual cell necrosis. This is another uh, feature that we see in primary interface dermatitis. Next. Necrotic keratinocytes, epitosis, sedative bodies, colloid bodies, disc keratotic uh, cells, the previous one. Uh, you wanted to go there, is it? So I want presentation one which we were, we were into. Yeah, the next slide. Yes. Yes. Can you appreciate the keratinocytes which are necrotic, the colloid bodies, the sedative bodies? Where is it present? This is in the epidermis, in the spinous layer. Most often we see them in the, this is a basal layer. So we see them in the basal layer. We do see them in the, what is this part of the skin? Papillary dermis, or sometimes they could be seen up to the keratin layer. So, severity bodies, the colloid bodies are part of the feature because we do see them in many other lesions. Next. So, basal layer, upper papillary dermis, individually or in clumps, so they could be seen in the epidermis also. So, mid or the upper spinous layers. So how do we say they are necrotic? It's, it just looks like a mass of cytoplasm, doesn't have a nucleus. Next. Yes. Anybody? Tell me how. <coughs> Can you identify this? Yes? How many are there? There are many. There are many. Where are they present? Where are they present? This is a epidermis. This is a dermis. Where are they present? Yeah. Dermoepidermal junction, the basal layer. There are many here. So, next feature. So, sepate bodies is one, and another feature is inflammatory cells that obstruct the dermoepidermal junction. So, the lymphocytes are common, but we do see other inflammatory cells also, like histiocytes, neutrophils, mast cells, and eosinophils. And in place of lymphocytes across the basement membrane, we may so see this exocytosis. No lymphocytes present within the epidermis too. So, what are the features now? We, we you are able to appreciate in this of what we described or discussed. We discussed only the basal cell change. Basal cell change, can you appreciate? Here, what appears marked? A dominating, the inflammatory infiltrate appears. So, dominant, obscuring the vacuolar change. But vacuolar change is present and sebate bodies. So, one, two, sparse sebate bodies. So, depending on how much of infiltrate is present, how does it present? So, there's one way to classify this dermatitis. So, lichenoid dermatitis, when you see this with vacuolar change as about, we saw the previous slide, yeah. and a band like mononuclear infiltrate obscuring the dermoepidermal junction. So, this is lichenoid dermatitis. Next. Non lichenoid interface dermatitis, where there is variable degree of lymphocytic infiltration and exocytosis. So, where is this inflammatory infiltrate concentrated? What is this structure? Can you make out a round structure here? It's for a lining and it says or it is revealing its, its identity by the presence of RBCs with it. What is it? Blood vessel. Blood vessel. So, that is the superficial blood vessel which is there in the papillary dermis. So, when inflammatory infiltrates are around the blood vessel, what do we call it as? Perivascular inflammatory infiltrate. So, non lichenoid in the base dermatitis, they have variable degree. So, we are not seeing band like infiltrate here. So, infiltrate is present here if we grade properly, we may call this as moderate. So, it becomes subject to mild moderate unless we describe what it is, but it is around the vessels. Then, band like by 
presence of mononuclear infiltrate, which is dense, lichenoid and band like, but without prominent basal cell change. So density of inflammatory infiltrate, it is variable. It could be from posse absent to market. So variable depends on the disease, the stage of evolution, posse inflammatory to glycanoid inflammatory infiltrate. So based on this, now I want you to grade the slides which I show you now. Yes, there are three slides. So if you have all three as yes, for comparison, then we can say mild, moderate, severe. If we have only one, it becomes difficult. This is only, it, it's subjective, okay? So this is dense, yes. So comparatively, which appears more? Which could be moderate? This could be mild, yes. So mild, moderate, and then severe. Inflammatory, this is just to show you that inflammatory cell infiltration varies. The density varies. The secondary changes I told you are in the epidermis and epidermal changes is a variable. Again, this depends on the disease, the time of biopsy, the course of evolution or evolution of the disease and also the site of biopsy. There are four pictures here. Please concentrate on the epidermis. What has happened? Okay, what has happened to the epidermis here? Is it normal, atrophic, or acanthotic, hypoplastic? You all agree there is hypoplastia here? Yes. Is it following a definite pattern? This is irregular. Or we can say somewhat psoriasiform because what is elongated here? The retail pegs are elongated. So, psoriasiform, hypoplasia. What has happened to the epidermis here? You can, have, you can count the layers also. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, 5 and less we call it as an atrophic epidermis. So, it is atrophic. So, here it is acanthotic, slightly irregular acanthotic. Here, digitate. Yeah? So the retail pegs are elongated. You know this, can you make a diagnosis of this lesion? Very good, like a netitis, clock clutching. No, they are holding the inflammatory infiltrate. So you one papillary dermis that is just widened and has a lichenoid infiltrate. So papillary dermal changes, the papillary dermal, dermis, even the adventitia around the adenexal structure shows changes secondary to basal cell damage. There is an expansion to accommodate the inflammatory infiltrate. So basal cell damage, what happens with, what, what do we see in the basal cells apart from the keratinocytes? Melanocytes. How do we recognize? I should have shown you the melanocyte in the previous slide. They look like clear cells. So melanocyte, there is damage to the melanocyte as well with incontinence at the pigment. So where does it enter? Dermis. What happens once this pigment is left free, it comes out of the cell and enters the dermis. The scavengers, the macrophages which come and engulf this pigment, what do we call them as? Melanophages, macrophages containing melanin. So we see that in the dermis. Can you appreciate this melanophages? So plenty of melanophages. So that says there is basal cell damage and incontinence pigment incontinence. So the other changes according to other anatomical components of the skin, perivascular, peri adenexal infiltrates or inflammatory infiltrate and then lymphocytic globular panniculitis. It all depends on the disease. You uh, just perform this. What can you make out here? The initial slides that we spoke about the inflammatory <coughs> cells. So we could see them at the dermoepidermal junction. So where do you see the inflammation now? What is this structure? It's not a blood vessel. It looks bilayered. It's got dining cells, which are two layers. And where is this? This is which part of the skin is this? Dermis, papillary, reticular, reticular dermis. So we are seeing the subcutaneous fact here. This is a deeper dermis. This is peri-adenexal inflammatory 
infiltrate. So even here you can make out around the hair follicle. So not just in the papillary dermis, even in the reticular dermis. So classification of interface dermatitis. So one is based on how the epidermal changes appear, the other is based on the changes, the inflammatory cells. But again, uh, a classification for all convenience groups is, uh, uh, we say put all these diseases with similar uh, appearance in one group and uh, clinical histological, immunological, all these when we take, I think uh, a person who just starts to categorize this would land up definitely with a lot of uh, confusion. Good. I just give you a list of diseases which come under interface dermatitis. Main or important thing feature that we put these diseases under interface dermatitis is we classify, we look at the microscopy and then classify them as bacterial interface dermatitis and lichenoid interface dermatitis. So bacterial interface dermatitis, now you are familiar. So this shows basal vaculation as the most prominent feature. And the inflammatory infiltrate which is seen is variable and it is around the peri or around the blood vessels and in the interstitial. And it has many lymphocytes. Just to name a few dermatitis which belong to this or diseases which come under this category. We have erythema multiforme viral diseases, then early cutaneous LE and then graft versus, acute graft versus post reaction. So two ways to classify interface dermatitis. So one with bacterial interface dermatitis. The bacterial changes are there, the other with lichenoid infiltrate. So lichenoid interface dermatitis. You agree this is lichenoid interface dermatitis? It's a band of inflammatory infiltrate that is present at the dermoepidermal junction. This is quite dense, almost obscuring the vacuolar cheek. So it is dominated, looks more uh, dominant. So lichenoid infiltrate is a restricted to papillary dermis and one of the feature seen typically in interface dermatitis, but we should always know that there are other diseases where this lichenoid infiltrate is present. So there are so many diseases which are uh, uh, mentioned here where we see a band line inflammatory infiltrate. So like tuberculosis, pericles, and mucus, mucus, but there are always other changes and we do follow your clinical diagnosis. So just the band like inflammatory infiltrate will not be taken into consideration for making a diagnosis of interface dermatitis. So the pattern and then the uh, density of inflammatory cells in the papillary dermis do not correlate well with epidermal. So there are epidermal changes that occur. So but these epidermal changes do not correlate with the amount or the type of inflammatory infiltrate that is present. Yes. So based on the epidermal changes, what are the different types of epidermal changes that are seen in interface dermatitis? So they are grouped or they are categorized into five. So acute cytotoxic type, premature terminal differentiation, irregular epidermal hyperplasia, interface dermatitis with psoriasiform hyperplasia, interface dermatitis with epidermal atrophy. So five changes we could see in the epidermis in case of interface dermatitis. So let us just look at the pictures and then identify what are these five. Acute cytotoxic type, the basal vaculation with lymphocytic infiltration. So we do see basal vaculation and the lymphocytes infiltrating the lower epidermis, exocytosis. Then scattered individually necrotic keratinocytes at various levels of the epidermis. Why should we see them at various levels of epidermis, the necrotic keratinocytes? What is this type of hyperplasia? Acute cytotoxic. So there is necrosis of the keratinocytes at all the levels. So that cytotoxic is because that is the one which leads to damage to the cells. Then entire process is rapid, so acute. 
that does not interfere with epidermal keratinization, the horny layer is unaffected. This is important when we say horny layer is unaffected. You all remember the typical lichen planus? How is the horny layer? We say what what qualifies the description of a keratin layer in lichen planus? We say there is hyperkeratosis. What type? What is a normal hyperkeratin? Normal keratin. We see basket bean. So here initially it is laminated, but all the laminae come together. They become compact. So compact hyperkeratosis. So it does not interfere with epidermal keratinization. The horny layer is unaffected. The meaning here is we may not see that compact hyperkeratosis. It could still remain as the basket bean. Yeah, maintains normal basket bean. There are some diseases which come under this category, uh, fixed drug eruptions. So, BRAC versus BOST, we took it for the previous one also. Abbreviations of uh, PLEPA, fever, morbidity, fat, viral, and drug eruptions and eruptions of lymphocyte, or of lymphocyte recovery skin reactions secondary to drugs. You may remember the drug eruptions as one of the types where we see this type of epithelial change. So premature dominant differentiation. So early development of a thick granular layer and compact stratum corneum. Let's look at the stratum corneum here. This is there is hyperkeratosis. It is quite compact. <coughs> so it resembles acryl skin and usually associated with dense lichenoid infiltrate of lymphocytes. So this is premature terminal differentiation. <coughs> LP is the prototype. So, like in planus, you do keep seeing this type of hyperkeratosis, which is compact with a lichenoid infiltrate. The irregular epidermal hyperplasia. What hypertrophic like in planus like? So, look at the epidermis. It is not following any of the rules at all. It is not normal. So, it is showing acanthosis. What type? It is so irregular. But when we look at it carefully, it is the bulbs or the great apex which are elongated and more hyperplastic. So irregular epidermal hyperplasia is another type. So where there is variation of the previous pattern, market irregular epidermal hyperplasia, hypertrophic lichen planus is one example you can take where it is DNA and a long standing lichenoid drug. Eruptions. The interface dermatitis and psoriasis form hyperplasia. I put the same picture right here. It's not a real regular psoriasis form hyperplasia where the retapex are elongated. There is lengthening of the papillary dermis. This is slightly irregular but elongated retapex. So it rise to the psoriasis form appearance. So this is class. Uh, Interface changes as a second a secondary pathological picture with psoriasis form hyperplasia. So lichenoid variants of pigmented but pluric dermatitis, mycosis, fungoidism. You know, I think various diseases where when we talk of acanthosis, we say whether the epithelium is growing as exophytic, giving rise to a lesion which is visible on the superficial skin, or is it growing? Deeper. So, is it the retapex or the epidermis uh, superficial area which is growing? So, what has happened to the epidermis here? Definitely, you can say it is atrophic. The criteria less than five layers. And what else? What is not seen here? Yes, retail edges. There are no retail edges at all. Flattening, absent, you may say. So, this is atrophic. Epiderm epidermal atrophy represents atrophic phase of several dermatosis. In the five patterns of epidermal changes we have uh, appreciated atrophic lichen planus. We are doing the biopsy at a later stage. Okay, we, we do say this uh, atrophy and not the classical features. The long list of diseases with interface uh, dermatitis we do have but uh, LE in its various uh, clinical and histological presentations, LP and variants, and uh, erythema multiforme. So all these are considered as the major interface diseases with major features of interface 
dermatitis. So diseases with interface changes as the primary pathology. So cutaneous LE, lichen planus, erythema multiforme, then fever, lichen striatus, graft versus host reaction, and fixed drug eruptions. So out of these, what we commonly encounter from you, the biopsy you send, is the lichen planus and all the variants of lichen planus. So now, uh, are you clear with certain microscopic features of interface dermatitis? Yes? Uh, can I just show you? Uh, I think still I have time or my time is up? Huh? Five minutes? Okay. Five minutes, I, ju I just want to show you the pictures just to know whether you have understood what I showed you. A quick go through. So I think straight away you come out with a diagnosis for this. What is it? Excellent. So what features qualify? Yeah. Very good. So come methodically from keratin layer to the deeper layer. So that you will not miss any finding. Okay, there is hyperkeratosis, this is basket pain, this is normal, okay, this is probably the adjacent skin also. So this is becoming compact, compact hyperkeratosis. What has happened to the epidermis? Acanthosis, first is acanthosis. What has led to this acanthosis? Hypergranulosis, the granular layer is more than 4 to 5 and this is wedge shape. This is focal hypergranulosis that we are seeing which is wedge shape. Then, the basal layer, what has happened to the basal layer? There is vacuolar change, soft toothed appearance. What has happened to the necrotic keratinocytes? They have entered the upper papillary dermis. So you can see the necrotic keratinocytes, the sedative bodies are the colloid bodies. And what else is present? Inflammatory infiltrate. No? Maybe this is moderate to sparse to moderate, but this is at the dermoepidermal junction. So what is not seen here, another feature. With the basal cell damage, what should you see? The amongst the inflammatory infiltrate. The yeah, melanophages. Maybe they are there. This picture. I think they put it. This probably. You can call it as a melanophage. Just look at the color difference which is there. So this has all the features and this is Lichen platelets. Yes. What is this? Where is the change? Which change is dominant here? Basal vacuolation. It is extensive. What has this given rise to? Is it just a max dose of space? It is likely more than that. No? So max dose of space and you can see the lichenoid infiltrate and the colloid bodies also, this hyperplasia of the epidermis. Next. Next. Okay, next. Next. Yes. Atrophic, but still, comparatively, if you compare it with a lesion, you may call it as atrophy. It may not be that uh, next. Next. Yes. Hypertrophic. So what features are there? Market. Hyperkeratosis compact. Then, the regular acanthosis with the epidermal hyperplasia with rounded retail ridges. So, where is the infiltrate? Dense infiltrate. It is patchy around the bulbous ends. And then, dermal melanophages. Can you make out this? The color is looking so different. So, melanin is a brown black pigment. It's Okay, this is again uh, same. Yeah, mucosal LP, one more thing they should remember. Because we say usually there is no parakeratosis, but mucus normally has parakeratotic cells. What is this? Space? It's a roomy, no? Okay, this is just a space. You, uh, nicely, I think we can get accommodated in that space. What is this form? What is in that? What happens when this becomes big? The max dose of space. Yeah, very big. Yeah. So what is this? Full is like inflated. It has all the features, 
This epidermal hyperplasia, the lichenoid infiltrate, extensive acid cell maculation leading to a Buddha formation. So this is Buddha's life in fetus. So uh, yeah, I think I, I end uh, here. Uh, hope I can go back to the objectives uh, with what I started. So if I am able to fulfill the last objective, what was it? Yeah. <laughs> to inspire all of you to, to read the dermatology, dermatopathy. I know all of you are doing it uh, regularly, but still, as uh, 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 the Professor from Kajira Tashri was saying, so please get associated with the pathology department. So learn that. And go back as unique uh, so PGs from JJMMC and SS Institute who can read the, uh, read the dermato dermatology slides. So that uh, gives happiness to the pathologists also. I just want to thank uh, Dr. Jaita Sandrish. I just given it. So he was the one uh, uh, who inspired me to become uh, a dermatopathologist. I'm sure my colleagues also would. Uh, uh, they have started liking it, and uh, they're also uh, learning dermatopathology. And uh, Dr. Murugesh. Uh, has given me a lot of chances. You know, I was regularly teaching uh, Dhamit PGs and pathology PGs, Dhamit pathology when I was in JJMC. We started that again. I don't know why uh, we stopped. So let us uh, eat together and then uh, we learn clinical aspects from you and then uh, you learn Dhamit pathology from us. Finally, we're looking at the patients. The hug it's a multidisciplinary approach and we can contribute to the well-being of the patient. So I, th I thank uh, Dr. Jagannath Kumar for giving me this opportunity. I really enjoy and uh, I'm thankful to all of you for your patient listening and learning, I should say. Uh, I'm showing interest to learn dermatopathology and become dermatopathologist. And one article by Dr. George who is professor as dermatology, dermatologist and dermatopathologist from IJDBL of uh, March, uh, I think 13. I, I have not uh, put the reference uh, here. Please go through that and it's very nicely written and it gives uh, uh, an overall uh, a uh, picture or view of interface drum benches. Thanks a lot. Thank you, ma'am. I would like Dr. Sumar to hand over the moment to Dr. Kishore.